like to introduce you to a product that is new to me that I have been trying out and I think it's really awesome. It is by the same manufacturer as the Sticky Bat, which I feature in one of my other videos. It's the same sort of uh, surface that is on the Sticky Bat, it's just not attached to a bat. You can pick it up and you can, you can move it to whatever surface you want to. This is called a Sticky Pat. It's by uh, CI, which um, if you uh, Google them online, uh, you can find a lot of great products that they have on their website. I will also post a link um, at the inf in the information um, underneath the video. So hopefully um, you guys will check them out because they have some really cool products. This, I don't even know what substance this is made of, but it's really cool because it has a stickiness that you can put pots on something and they won't slide around. If you were to take a pot and uh, put it on, you know, the regular banding wheel, it tends to scoot around. And when you're waxing or doing something where you don't want your pot to move, that can be annoying. So this is super cool because you can put it on your uh, turntable and it's it will help to keep your pot, if I just put this back on, it keeps your pot totally in place. It's, it's nice and sticky. It's very cool. So what I'd like to do on the sticky bat today is I just want to show you how on uh, using um, a, a leather hard pot that I have already trimmed I want to show you how we can do one of my favorite textures which I've shown you in a in another video this is a faceted texture and um, I love to use a glaze which illustrates uh, texture well with this texture um, it's, it's one of my favorite textures to do it has kind of a, a smoothness to it, but it's also very cool, and I love the feel of it. I'm a very tactile person, so like when I use a mug or a bowl or something that has it on there, I, I like the way it feels. Now, there are two different ways that um, I make this texture. One would be with a, a loop tool, and any sort of a loop tool, like if I wanted a small texture, I'd use a smaller loop tool. This is the loop tool that I would have used for this one when I did this. And I this one, by the way, I do show in, a, in a, another video where you can see that. But today what I wanted to show you was this really awesome tool. This is by Cheryl Mud Tools, and I am a huge fan of Mud Tools. Um, their products are just really fun and kind of innovative, and they really look cool as well. So this is just a piece of metal that has cuts on both ends, and these cuts are sharpened. So this is a smaller one, this is a larger one. I'm going to use the smaller texture right here. And I, I once uh, heard a Robin Hopper uh, presentation when he was talking about he would use a, a tent peg, like an old metal tent peg that was slightly bent where the, it would make a hole like this. And I thought, well, that was kind of clever. But I, I don't have any tent pegs, but I do have a mud tool. So what I do is when the clay is nice and leather hard like this, you just kind of come along and you just pull it as long as you want it. If you want nice long strokes, you can create beautiful facets. Here I'm just going to do kind of evenish rows starting off at the foot. Now, I am not trying to go any closer to the foot just because I don't want to damage the foot. So I'm going to have like a nice little area right there uh, by the edge of the foot that's not textured. And actually that works really well with the glazing. And I'm just going to come along in here and keep going and then we'll talk about it when I'm done. At this point, I'm going to flip the pot over, and I'm going to do the top, and I sometimes also find that if I scoot it a little closer to the edge, it allows me to angle the tool a little bit more. So I'm going to scoot it a little closer to the edge here as I do this. Okay, 
I finished the texturing on it and I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Obviously I kept it on the turntable. I like to keep it on the turntable because it does keep it round. Some of my students like to turn things like this on the table but you always have to be very careful. If you ever plan on turning it like this, my recommendation is I usually, when, when I'm wearing an apron, I will put a, a towel on my lap so I can kind of gently rest it on my legs and I know that I'm not squishing it. If you have it on the table, I would definitely put a towel down on the table and hold it gently. Make sure you're not like squishing it and bending that rim. You don't want to uh, misshape your rim in the leather hard state because even if you re-correct it, clay can have a memory and if you squeeze it and misshape it now and re-correct it during firing, it could uh, pull back to that uh, once warped shape. So you just want to be careful with that. So I, you know, I'll, I would look at the rim, make sure it looks round and even, and then when I go to dry my uh, pots, anything that is like a bowl or a plate, I will usually try to put upside down. That way I know that it will dry evenly. Um, if you dry it right side up and uncovered, that rim dries out a little bit too quickly. And again, it could cause uneven drying, which could cause warping, could even cause cracking if it's extreme. I do like to make sure that I sign my pots while they're unfired. And if I were thinking about it, I would have actually used my stamp on this prior to texturing, so I had it on there so I could remember to, you know, go around it. I forgot, so no big deal. This one won't have my stamp on it. Um, now, this is very rough, so as that dries and it gets bone dry, I will come along in there and I will clean off the, the little um, edges, the little debris. So it's a fun way to create a simple, um, fast texture that really kind of illustrates uh, your, your glaze um, texture really well. I would not use this if I'm, if I'm using just a totally opaque glaze that doesn't show texture well, but this, this shows off your texture showing glazes. And, um, a lot of the glazes that I use, um, if you see some of my other videos, my preferred glazes are the Coyote brand glazes. Um, I buy a lot of the Coyotes. Um, they are pre-made glazes. I, my home studio does not have a really good enough ventilation or facility to mix up glazes. So I usually buy, oh, let me just grab one. I usually buy the Coyote brand. I really like these. Um, they are from Albuquerque and it's coyote clay and color. Check out my, um, it's a video of a PowerPoint that I made that you might want to check out and uh, it might give you some ideas on how some of the colors go together and react. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the sticky bat and seeing uh, uh, the Cheryl mud tool uh, for faceting and texturing and uh, happy texturing.